I'm Jeremy Grasscapades of The Greener Brett. I'm here in my short grass today coming to you and we are going to be comparing it to a long blade grass of the Brett of the Greener Lawn over at Jeremy's place. Stay tuned. <laughs> it was all over the place. It was. I like it. First part was What's going on guys? So we're headed over to go see Jeremy. I'm gonna show him how to actually mow his lawn. So got the old John Deere in the back of the truck. It's time to hit the road. Note to self. Don't try to put that thing in the back of my truck by myself again. That was awful. <laughs> What's up, man? How'd you get that beast in there? I put it in there all by my lonesome. I can tell you, I won't ever do that again. I bet. I bet. It's, uh, it's a lot heavier than uh, you think it is. Oh, I know how heavy that thing is. So quick overview of it. On the personal pace system, the nice thing about it is the harder you push into this, the more the mower the, the, bleh, the more the mower moves forward. The less you push into it, it stops. Yes. So yeah, so when you saw me run at you just a second ago, that was just pushing into this fully. So don't push with your arms, just walk, hold your arms at a steady pace. All right. You'll, it'll kind of feel like weird at first because it'll feel like you want to push into it, but it's not nothing like that. You just push wherever you want to be. And as you make turns, you're going to feel it walk itself around in the turns. Did you see how easily I can just grab it and flip it? All right. That's the way that it works. So starting it is just 
as on anything. It's just grabbing a hold of that bad boy and then pulling it right there. So brace your foot on the deck right there where it has a nice little foot. Back of that pretty looking truck. Yeah, that's what I like. This personal pay system thing is weird. That takes some getting used to. Master, it does look pretty good. That it's mulched it pretty darn well. That was only a week's worth of growth, six days to be exact, but that's all that I was left. It didn't overgrow. I only took off about 
about one fourth of the blade. It wasn't close to the one third quite yet, so it was really nice. It's left a really, really, really nice cut. The man in action. Glasses are fogging up on me. Technical difficulties. I'm out here with a big time YouTuber. That's right. International superstar. <laughs> After all. <laughs> He's been huge in Australia. Um, and India. In India. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the, the Indians love short grass, apparently. Got a big following. That works. What a rip, tater chip. You ain't afraid of no ghosts. Dun -dun 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 -dun. Dun -dun 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 Da -na 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 -na. Ghostbusters! Alright. About to. I'm about to strap on the. Uh, Who are you gonna call? Geez. This is the strange thing, and it's playing with my stuff. Did we just copyright it for him? <laughs> it's alright. They won't be able to actually tell what uh, the song is. <laughs> Not on our records, <laughs> by any means. Alright. Tell me when you're running. I'm on. All right. So one of the important things that you have to do with a reel mower, and it's really annoying, and it's a lot of extra time, but super crucial is before you mow, you need to make sure that you're going to actually be able to cut the grass. So you stick some paper in here along the reel, the bed knife, and make sure that it's cutting all the way across. So if you don't do this, you don't check, and you have an issue like this, where it's folding over, and you go to mow when it's folding over. Obviously, it's uh, not going to mow very good on this side. So really quick and easy, there's adjustments up here on top and uh, you loosen a bolt and then turn this adjustment and that will tighten the reel of bed knife and look at that, magically it cuts. And for some that's magically delicious. That's right, bam, too easy right? Mm. Tighten her back up. Does it have an adjustment on both sides? It does. Pretty easy. Like I said, you loosen a bolt, and then there's these two knobs right up here on top. I don't know if you can see them right now, but tighten those knobs. The tighter you tighten them, the tighter the clearance between the reel and bed knife is. If it's too tight, loosen it, obviously, and you'll increase the distance between the reel and the bed knife. And there we go. Easy enough. Yes. <laughs> hey, cue the montage.
time. Jeremy, tell the good people of YouTube what we're putting in this backpack sprayer. Today we're going to be putting some 1801. It's Green Punch, as you guys know it, from the next product line. What it is, is it's going to be a nice shot of nitrogen in the fall time to give us a nice green boost. It's going to drive our roots deep with the RGS that it has inside of it. It has a little bit of iron that will give us a great greening up. It'll really, really, really help the lawn going into the fall time, and it will help through the drought times that we're about to go through. All right, cue the spraying montage. <laughs> dive in behind the scenes yeah. greener lawn episode today. I think I learned that one from the LCN enough, honestly, because he's wearing them in his garage all the time. And I thought, why would he be doing that? And don't know for sure, never have asked or never been told, but I, that's what I honestly believe. All right. Anyways, down to business, Jerry. Let's do this. <sighs> so, mud the grass. Yes. Tell me what, tell me what you're thinking. What's the difference? So on yours, there is that degree of difficulty that you actually have when you get out into it. It's a learning curve. Once you actually learn that mower, it becomes really easy. If you notice though, somebody actually did a lot more mowing and was a bigger man in that situation instead of two passes, just thought I'd throw hey, that out there. I, I will say mowing with the Time Master it's the first time I've ever mowed with the personal pace system. And in my opinion, it has a harder learning curve than the than the real mower does. Personally. It's it's a lot like it reminds me of driving a, a bobcat um for the first time or or like a uh or a zero turn mower anything that has those kind of controls to it to where their super minute adjustments moves the mower really fast and uh i mean i'm sure if i if i mowed with it more than two passes i would be able to uh pick that up easily yeah so the trick with the time master actually is is to hold your arms rigid and just walk with it with your body um, you don't want to push as people have a tendency to push because it makes it go faster So you just hold your arms kind of rigid to the side and you just walk at your pace pushing into it And this autofocus thing is going crazy You good? good? I don't know if that's a, a statement that we want to answer on camera What? Am I good? I'm great. I'm great 
<laughs> Two words, Jeremy. Seed stock. Seed stock. Don't say that. That's oh. censor. Censor that. Hold on. Censor that part. That's that's a customer. Yeah, that is. Um, <laughs> that is one of the things that actually made me want a more powerful mower when it came down to it. For me personally, was the seed stock issue. I was having a lot of issues with that smaller uh, mower deck, and so with that, uh, something I did never want to talk about again. Sorry for bringing it up. It's okay. The thing that actually fixed the seed stock for me was the power hit of Aerate and RGS. It was the same one that we used in the first video that uh, Brett used on his yard and everything. It opened up my soil and so it made my grass relax and it quit producing the seed stock. Um, on the whole mower aspect of it, my mower was struggling with those harder blades. I could hear it bogging down. It wouldn't kill it, but it would bog down and it wasn't as clean of a cut. The Time Master actually has up that degree and it's never had any problems with it as far as the seed stock has been concerned. The other part of that though that I did want to talk about was on the long blades. I know that my Time Master every once in a while, if I let it get above the one third rule, it will drop a long blade audience <laughs> it'll drop a long blade um, from here to there throughout the lawn it was illustrated in my Toro versus my Honda um, what do you see as far as the long blades that are left behind so it, one of the things that I'm not in love with and it may there there's two causes that I think could be causing this issue in my yard is there's a lot of stragglers and with with the time master i did see there wasn't hardly any stragglers there yeah you know, the power of that mower and the suction from that mower prevents any any stragglers from the for the most part um so i think what's happening with mine is there i've got a i've got an 11 blade reel on my mower and from what i understand the less blades you have, the better on a real mower. Um, also, I've been mowing for a while with it and I haven't sharpened the blade. So that backlapping compound that came in today, um, in the next day or two, I'm gonna, I'm gonna backlap my mower and see if that helps pick up any of those stragglers. Okay. Um, I know that from the other video that we had gotten a couple of questions about the watering regimens. What is your watering requirements on a short blade grass? So what I've been doing this year, um, I've really been trying to figure out the best thing to do. At one point in the year, I was watering super, super frequently. Um, and then I, I actually talked to John Perry and he told me what I needed to be doing was watering less frequently, but much deeper. So. I backed it off to every three days and I was watering each zone at about 45 to 50 minutes. And uh, after I started doing that and after the, the air rate and uh, RGS application we did, um, I really noticed a difference in the lawn. It really darkened up, it greened up, it got rid of a lot of the yellowing issues. And I'm, I attribute that to that RGS and to the air rate and to the other micronutrients we put in there and the deepening of those roots and then watering deeper and helping those roots grow a lot deeper. Nice. So on my long grass, um, I actually decide that I like it at about anywhere from one to two days a week. Um, up till about July 14th, I was watering only one time a week per zone. July 14th was that seed stock issue and so I thought I would help my lawn get through a struggling period and so I bumped my watering over to two times a, um, a zone or a week a week which is crazy though because it was I mean during July and August this year here in Utah it was a consistent 95 to 100 degrees every single day with no rain Correct. And that's kind of the reason why I split it to two, just to give it kind of a heat relay, um, relief to it so that it could actually perform. 
um, it would go and it would deplete out on the end days to where I could see it stressing out. You'll actually see a Kentucky bluegrass kind of turn steely color. It's kind of a grayish blue color and that's about the time that it needs water and it's telling you and it's you know basically speaking saying help me help me. And so I just moved it to two days. I didn't add more water to it. I just took the it, on my lawn because I have the rotator heads it takes a little while longer to get it down I have to water it for an hour and 15 minutes for one inch of water so it's an hour and 35 minutes if I need that one inch and um, one and a half inches it's just a little shy but the hour and a half actually worked out really well through the heat of the summer on two waters I backed it off from that um, I backed it off from that one and a half inches about two weeks ago when I got the notice of our water being shut off and yeah I have it down at three-fourths of an inch over the two days still and it's still performing extremely well. Temperatures obviously have dropped we've been in the mid 80s really consistently versus the 90s and it's really greened up and it looks great. I mean this is prime time growing season for cool season grasses though so yeah even though we are losing the water our grass is still going to hold on for a little while until it really starts getting cool into the frosting and then, then we're screwed. In a uh, lack of better terms, <laughs> lack of better words, make your lawn be what you want it to your dedication level. That's my number one tip. That's the thing that I've actually said in my how high should I cut my lawns it is the actual truth sustain it where you sustain it where your dedication level is hands down absolutely and remember you can do anything that you want to do as long as you believe in yourself <laughs> i like this better than mine i like this better than mine once again i appreciate it thank you for letting me out on your lawn again and actually coming out to my lawn I'll let you leave my channel with your parting thoughts on my lawn, and then we'll go ahead and uh, move forward. Awesome. So, it was my first time out to Jeremy's lawn to mow um, yesterday, and uh, I will say it looks good. I mean, you know, I, I personally prefer shorter cut grass, but you know, long cut grass looks great if you maintain it correctly. You know, and that comes down to the same things that we've been talking about, you know, with shortcut grasses. You still, you know, you still have to mow your grass regularly. If you want your yard to look good, short or long, you have to maintain that one-third roll. You have to mow it regularly. You have to do those things like feed it with the right nutrients, you know, mow it correctly, give it the right water, all of those things contribute to a healthy lawn and Jeremy's lawn looks great you know obviously you guys like how his lawn looks um, I I did enjoy coming out there and seeing come, some of the stuff that he's doing you know he's got some different equipment that you know maybe maybe I'll look into getting down the road um, but yeah I, I appreciate you letting me come out and play with your toys and check out the lawn and uh, hopefully it's not too long before we do it again. I agree. He did look good as a Ghostbuster though. <laughs> that was a good look on him. It was. I did like that. Yeah, I really did too. All right, man. Well, I appreciate it. I appreciate it too. I'm and as Jeremy. always, I'm Jeremy from the Greener Lawn Maker Green.